Hi, today we are making a travel mala. A travel mala is a small version of a mala necklace. A traditional mala necklace has 108 beads on it to represent the 108 lines of energy that run to and from the heart. The travel mala is 27 beads, so it's a small version of a full mala. And that way it's easier to take with you if you're traveling or you want to bring it in your purse somewhere to work or anywhere. It's just an easy version of a full length mala. The malas that we're making today are going to be hand knotted, um, which is a traditional way to build a mala necklace to put little knots in between each of the beads. Um, that is one way to do it. That's how we're doing it today. You can make these simply with spacer beads in between all the beads. Um, it's the gold beads here. Um, it's just a quicker way to make it. But today I'm showing you the hand knotted technique. First, we will go over all of the supplies that you need to make these hand knotted travel malas. And to start with, you're going to need your beads. I recommend eight millimeter beads for this project. Eight millimeter beads is a nice size bead for this project. That's what all of these um, malas I have here are. So you can see how it comes out about the size of it. Um, six millimeter would just make a, a smaller 10 millimeter for this type of project. The travel mala size works well. Um, I wouldn't go much over a 12 millimeter um, bead in this. It's just going to be pretty bulky. So today we're using eight millimeter beads. So you need your 27 eight millimeter beads. You need your cord to do the stringing. And the cord that I have here, um, this is called Eslon, and I will put all these um, supplies in the description. And Eslon is a nylon cord, and that is a good product to use with this because it doesn't stretch. So over time, as you're using the mala, if you use something like cotton or silk, it'll stretch um, and the beads won't look as neatly stacked on the mala, um, but the nylon cord doesn't. So this is Eslon, and Eslon is about 0.5 millimeter thickness. And um, as we're doing this mala, this, the cord will be doubled over. So that's about one um, millimeter of thickness. And that is typically the size of bead holes. So that is also something to make sure that you have the beads drilled at at least a one millimeter bead hole. Um, or the cord won't fit through it. Um, so we got our beads, we got our cord. Um, you're going to need um, these uh, collapsible needles. Um, again, I'll put all this in the description. Um, it's just these little needles that uh, the, they're super thin. So they will guide through all the beads as you're making the knots. Um, you also will need some kind of um, scissors or clippers. To cut the cord but also at the end um, when we're tying the tassel on to be able to trim off the ends of that so scissors or clippers and then uh, you need some super glue because we always put a dab of super glue on the knots at the end to tie on the tassel just to make sure um, that it won't come off now for the tassel part there's a lot of choices um, often i you can use like a silk tassel. Um, a silk tassel can just, they usually have like a little loop on them or something that you can then attach at the bottom. Um, but today we're going to use a uh, embroidery thread, which is a cotton poly blend. Um, I just got this over at the Michael store. Um, so it's kind of more of a softer cottony tassel, um, but this is a really easy way to do it. Um, so I'm going to show this technique. And it's also very affordable. These are like 40 cents um, per skein. So um, I think you call this a skein. So you need your beads, your cord, your tassel. Um, you're also going to want a guru bead um, on the end of the mala. You don't have to do this because it's only a small mala, but it's traditional and malas to have a guru bead on it, which really harnesses all the energy that you're trying to accomplish with the mala. Um, so today I got a onyx um, guru. This mala that I'm building today for the demonstration, I'm going to use howlite um, as the main part of it, which is a very calming stone, but I'm gonna make it a chakra mala. Um, so I'm gonna have stones that represent all the chakra energies. So 
I have garnet, um, which is a stone of revitalization for the root chakra. I have carnelian for the second chakra for joy, citrine for the third chakra. Um, the chakra is Manipura, light and happiness. Um, my fourth is the malachite, um, which is a stone of adventure, which I thought was kind of fun for a heart chakra stone. Um, the heart chakra is traditionally green in color. So, um, and then I have aquamarine for fifth. That's the stone of courage and the fifth chakra represents um, truth and expression. And then I have some lapis lazuli for my sixth chakra for mind's eye. Lapis lazuli represents um, cognition. So like perception and insight and wisdom. And then I have my amethyst for my seventh. And amethyst is just such a gold standard of a gemstone for serenity and peace and calm and focus and all that. So that's my seven. So this is what I have um, for this demonstration. Okay, so the first step is you are going to put the needle on the cord. So grab your collapsible needle and your cord, um, and you're going to line up the ends of the cord, and you're going to place the needle on one side of that cord. And then you're going to slide it all the way down to the center. So. This is now even on both sides and just give it a tug. If it's not perfect, that does not matter because um, there's going to be some left over at the end anyway. So get that nice and snug at the end and then go down to the bottom of the cord where the two ends are. And you're going to tie a knot probably about six inches up. And the knots that we're going to do in here, so I'll redo that one because that's pretty important. So the knots that we're going to do in here are overhand knots. So you simply are going to hold the cord with one hand, and then you're going to make a loop, and you're going to put the ends over and back through, and then tie that. And this is the first knot. This is the bottom. This would probably be the easiest one to take out if it didn't work out. So you're just going to want a knot down there. And then we're going to start with the guru. So you're going to go back up to your needle and you're going to take your guru and you're going to slide your guru down right to that knot. And this is a good time to check and make sure that the cord, like the needle is right at the center. So I'm just dragging right back up there because I could already feel that it wasn't right at the end. Um, and you want to make sure that it is. So I'm just repositioning to make sure I have it at the end. Okay, so now my guru is on there and I'm going to tie my first knot on to secure the guru in place. So I have my stopper knot down at the bottom and now I'm going to put my first knot on. So to do that, you're going to hold the cord in your hand and I put the beads that are on there in between my first and my middle finger. And then I'm going to take my needle and go over. So it's an overhand knot. So you go over the cords and then back under. So you're simply going over and under. And I'll do quite a few of these with you so you can see that technique because this is a hand knotted mala. And hand knotting is a strategy, it's a, um, gets better with practice is what I'm trying to say. It, it's hard. The first mala that I ever made took me so long. I had to start and stop and I took out almost all the knots to fix them. So be patient with yourself as you're learning the hand knotting. So I got my knot in there. I'm holding the end with my right hand and my left hand has the loop and the bead. And so then I'm just going to take that loop and start to slide it down to the bead while gently pulling with my right hand until I get pretty close. I have not let go of that loop. If you let go of that loop and pull tight, the knot will not be flush up against the bead. So hang on to that loop as long as you can until it gets super small. And then you can take the cord and grab each side of the cord and gently pull apart and that will get the knot flush up against the bead. So that needs just a little extra tug. So I'm just gonna put my thumbnail and my middle fingernail, kind of squish it down right up against the bead. So there's the first, there's the guru is on the mala now. Now next, 
I'm going to take my um, needle again and I'm going to add my first bead. For this chakra, the design of this, I am going to put all the howl light on and then that final stretch of this is going to be those chakra stones. You, of course, can choose whatever pattern works for you, but that's the one that I'm doing today. So I will hand knot all the parts first and then it'll just be that final stretch with those chakra stones. So I'm going to again thread the cord through the bead, get the bead all the way back down to that knot. This nylon cord, like I said, it doesn't stretch at all, um, but at first it'll be a little bit curly from being on the whole thing wrapped around real tight. Like it, it comes this way. Um, so it takes a minute, but just even a couple that you go through will start to soften that cord and it won't be so curly and fussy. Okay. So there is my first bead. So again, I'm going to put those beads between my middle finger and my first finger and my thumb and my ring finger hold it. I'm going to take my needle, go over the cord and then come back up through the loop. I got caught there. And again, it's just a little curly, so it's just a little fussy here at the beginning. And then now I'm grabbing the cord with my right hand. I'm switching my left hand over to that loop where I'm going to pull it down towards the bead. And it's not going to go flush against that bead um, because I want to separate the cords at the very end to make sure that it does. But I'm going to get it pretty small up there while I'm just holding it up against that bead. And then again, I'm going to take each side of the cord and gently pull apart so it's nice and flush. And then just a little extra tug down there at the bottom. Okay, so we got our first bead on. All right, let's keep going. So next bead. Now, because malas, whether it's travel or full-size mala, have energy to them, I know I'm making this video as a demonstration but while you're working with the stones, you're going to be uh, transmitting energy from your person into this mala that you're making. So whether it's for you or it's for someone else, you want to be mindful of that. So a lot of times people will chant a mantra while they're making the mala and maybe the, ma the mantra that is associated with the mala or simply thinking the thoughts about the mala that you want the mala to have the energy of. So be mindful of that because there's definitely a give and take in this process. Um, so think about what you're thinking about, a little metacognition there while you're making the mala or chant a mantra or something like that because the energy will be shared. Okay, so here we go on this next bead. So again, setting up, going over through the loop, pulling through, grabbing on with my right hand, loop moves into left hand, slide it pretty close up to that bead. So I'm sh pulling, so I'm shrinking that loop down till it's just a little bit. Then I come in and take each side of those, the two strands of cord, and then just pull it right up against there. And again, beading. Got it over, under, through. Still a lot of cord, so it's still a little bit fussy. I like doing them this way. Um, sometimes people put all the beads on first and then go like, backwards through it. Um, but I like this because then it gets easier as you go because there's less cord. So it's a little fussy at the beginning, but then you can pull it apart, make sure it's nice and snug up there. Yeah, these are looking good. These are looking really, really nice. And these howlite stones are stone of tranquility. That's often how they're referred. So I think about that and I go at a smooth, tranquil pace. There's no need to rush with this project. Again, over, under, through. Holding that knot flush against the bead. Keeping that loop there until it gets pretty small and then coming in and doing this wonderful technique where you just pull apart and it gets nice and flush there. But I always like to give it a little extra squish. Now, if the cord starts getting twisted at any point, um, simply take your fingers, lining it up and just run back through. 
you know, to you make sure that the twists are out. Um, it's not it, in a small mall like this. It's not going to be that big of a deal. It will never get that bulky, but um, sometimes you just want to make sure it's not too twisted or the knots are going to start to look a little um, funky. Okay, so we're just going to keep going and bead the rest of these. And and I know we preset out the beads for this project. And this might sound a little crazy, but I'm going to recount them because I can't tell you how many times without my knowledge one's rolled off um, and you just don't want to finish the project and somehow have a miscount. So I'm going to go ahead and count again just to make sure I have 27 beads to go on this. I know I have seven from the chakra, so two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I can't tell you how important it is to count. If you're making a full mala um, with 108, it, the recount is something that you just do often just to make sure. Okay, so we're gonna keep going. So I'm about to put the last of the Howlite beads on. And since I have the section on this mala um, where I'm going to put the chakra stones and I'm going to put um, gold-plated hematite spacers in between them, I like the aesthetic of that. Um, I also love to have hematite on everything because hematite is such a heavy um, material that it gives it, it always gives it this extra groundedness energy to it. Um, so these are gold plated hematite stones. Um, but I don't want to do this last knot here because I'm going to start with one of those spacers. So if you're doing that, I mean, this is just design. Um, it's not necessarily DIY mala making kinds of things. It's more just design. So I'm going to start with a spacer there. And then I'm going to put in the reverse order the chakra stones on there. If I can find the whole a couple other things to always take note is the working space that you have. Um, you want to make sure you have a nice flat, undisturbed space, especially if you're making a full length mala because it's just so much bigger and your arms move um, so much farther when the cord, especially when you're starting the cord super long. Um, so the space is really important that you have a lot of space and then also lighting um, because if you're using dark stones, if you're using a lot of black stones or dark brown stones or garnet um, and you're trying to knot with that, it's really hard sometimes to find the hole. So good lighting is also something that is important when you're making these. And those these are just tips to help you be successful in this, whether you're just making one for yourself or if you're doing this because you're going to start um, making these and selling them, um, you want to make sure you're set up for success with this. Because again, it's about the energy. And if you have that positive energy while you're making the mala, then you're transmitting that energy into the mala. If you're finding yourself very frustrated, um, it's going to transmit some frustrated energy. I decided to be a little more efficient here and just put this on and then I'll slide them all down at the same time. It really is just such a therapeutic experience to work with gemstones and make these malas. There. Ooh, chakra is just so pretty. Chakra, it's just the aesthetic of it. I just absolutely love it. So that's my last bead. So now I have my 27 beads on there. Um, so I'm going to tie a knot above this bead to match um, the bead above the guru. So this will be my last knot that I tie. Give that that little special extra tug and squish up there. And then I'm going to go back through the guru. So the guru bead again. Now each of these beads, like I said, you want to make sure are drilled at about a um, at least a one millimeter hole. A lot of times they'll do it at 1.1 or 1.2. Um, same with the guru that you want to make sure because you have to go back through it with the other side, which means then there's more um, 
material going through to fill up that guru hole. So you want to make sure that that's big enough to be able to accommodate that. And then sometimes it just takes a minute to get everything out of the way. So I'm just going back through with my needle, back through the guru, so that all my cords are down at the bottom. And I'm just going to pull that all the way through, even after all these 20. And I can see, you can see where it got a little twisted. So it's just going to take a minute to kind of straighten that out there. And then now everything is full through the guru. So it's time to attach the tassel. I'm going to take off the um, little whatever those things that paper things that hold it. And I'm going to pull out some of the end of the tassel on both sides. So I'm going to take just about maybe three links, maybe four links of it out on one side. And then I'm going to find the end of it. I'm going to find the end of it on the other side and pull out just enough um, like one length of the skein here. Okay, so now I have, and there's a lot of cords going on and um, maybe using black probably wasn't the best idea. So it's hard to see what's what here. Then I'm going to take the embroidery floss that I have chosen for my tassel and I'm going to fold it over in the middle so that it's about equal on each side. And then that's where I'm going to attach it. So I'm going to take cords from the one side, this, the knot that I first did, where I have just that little extra set of cords. And then I'm going to take the cord that still has the needle in it, and I'm going to make two knots underneath that embroidery floss so that it's folded over in the middle so you know where the middle is. And then you're going to simply take this and tie two knots underneath here. So I'm just tying one knot. And I'm gonna just double check and make sure that's pretty even. It doesn't have to be exactly even because you are going to trim it at the end anyway, um, but you want it pretty good. And then you're gonna do a second knot here. And you're going to snug that up so that that's nice and attached and just give it a little look, I have a little cat hair on here, um, a little look to just make sure that's looking pretty good there. And then on that double knot that you put underneath there, you're going to take your super glue and you're going to seal that knot there. You don't need too much. You just want to make sure that the knot is covered um, so that it doesn't ever slip back out. And then you don't even have to wait for that to dry because if this then closes together, um, that's okay because then you're just sealing the inside of it a little bit more. Okay, so now you're going to fold it over and you're going to find the embroidery. So these, you, if this is bothering you, you can cut this off now. You can cut the rest of that um, cord off now and just set it aside. If it just seems like there's just too many cords going on here, there's so many strings. Um, so now you're going to take the two pieces that you pulled out. So you've got that and you're going to make sure that this shorter one is somewhere that you are aware of. And then this longer one is going to be what you wrap around the tassel. So get a fine grip on that so you know where this shorter piece is. And you're lining that all up. You want those cords that did the knotting to be inside, but we can adjust stuff at the end. And then you're gonna take this longer and you're going to start to use this to go all around and wrap to hold the top of the tassel in, oops. So you're gonna take this longer one and wrap around to form the top of the tassel. All these tassels have bands on them. 
And so that's what you're creating now. You're creating that band around the tassel to hold it all together. And you're just gonna wrap it all the way around. You don't wanna pull it too, too tight and you can adjust it anytime if any of this doesn't look neat enough. Um, just make that adjustment. And these are handmade, these are not machine made. So they're not going to be completely perfect, but you can get them looking pretty good. You do have a luxury of when you work with black cord because you just can't see as good. So I'm just gonna keep wrapping it around. Yeah, I'm just double checking to make sure I like it um, so that it's reaching the aesthetic that I like. I'm not a perfectionist, so I don't need things to be 100% perfect. I actually like a little bit of human error on the malas. Me, that makes them more personal. Um, everybody's different in that. There's, so it's, not a, it's just a whatever works for you, but I'm not going to fuss too much over this, cause, but it is coming out how I like it. Um, I'm not going to make a mess, that's for sure. Okay, I think that is enough. So I have, and you, you want to make sure it was at least as long as the um, tassel is. Now you're going to go find that other, that shorter piece that you had um, originally, and you're going to tie them together. And again, this is just a little overhand knot. You don't want to pull it too tight because that could pull some strings down and make it a little wonky. So again, two knots should do it. Like you're just gonna pull, tie two knots right on there. And then you're gonna take your glue again and you're going to secure your knot. And now you have your tassel. So you're gonna come down here and you're going to start to trim stuff up. So first you can trim those off um, and then you got to get in here and trim these loops. Since you folded it over and you have the loops now, you're going to trim them so they're open. And you do want to wait to the end. And it's kind of nice when the cord color is the same as the tassel. So you can see it's not great at the end. So I'm going to do a little extra. Oh, I don't even think I completely cut through that loop. Um, a little extra haircut here, which is kind of a fun part to give your mom a little haircut. And you can clean up your space. There. And you have your, your new travel mala. Isn't she beautiful? There. You have your new travel mala. Isn't she beautiful? So that's how you make a travel mala, hand knotted mala. Um, if you were to make a full length mala, obviously you would just keep doing the knotting process throughout the whole uh, length of the 108 and then the ending would be the same. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a good time making your travel malas.